Hey everybody, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Now, I want to start off by asking you a rather serious question. How many of you wasted money on purchasing certain diagnostic equipment? Whether it be buying something that's beyond your means or buying something that's below your means. You know, I take blame. I've done this. I'm sure we all have. And in this scenario, my client, he told me that his previous supplier um, recommended that he purchase the Ytech uh, factory tool. And I told him I didn't think that was necessary. I mean, he has several shops. They work on everything. They get a lot of Chryslers, but I mean, it's expensive. It's like 3,500 bucks and a one year renewal fee of $1,600. So anyhow, after diagnosing him, I referred him to a tool and his first programming gig was a, uh, a tip and replacement. He told me, Kurt, can you install the Ytech J254 software so I can use my JBox to program it? And I said, I don't think it's necessary. I said, I think your scan tool can do that. And he was like, ah, oh, we always programmed it. So anyhow, um, I want to share with you guys and give you some clarity on this misconception because what we're going to cover today is exactly how to configure the TIPA module with the MS919 on the 2012 Dodge Ram. And for those who are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Curtis Harden and I'm an Autel Diagnostic Consultant. I align people with the right tool and I provide the training and support that you're going to see in this video to them. So let's talk about what we're going to be going over. Just the tools and procedures that are required to do this, this job. We're going to define the purpose of the tip, TIPA module and then we're going to show you step by step how to remove the TIPA. And then lastly, how to code the tip and VIN with the MS919. Okay. And what I want you to guys to remember, okay, um, the tip. Em. Now, this version of the tip, em, there's two generations of tip, em, but this one has the central gateway module integrated into it. All right. So tip em stands for a totally integrated power module and is a combination unit that performs the function of the power distribution center and the front control module. And when we diagnose the vehicle, you're going to see this on the topology view. Okay. Now this error code, the B222C, this is something that you're going to see when you install a tip. All right. Vehicle con configuration, not programmed. And then programming. So it, it basically means downloading the latest software from the OEM online server database. So you can need to use your windows computer, and your J2534. Coding, also known as teach-in, setup, adaptations, these are terms used to configure adaptive data for a vehicle control module after repairs or replacement of vehicles. Okay, so try to get the difference. All right, the, it's, I think a lot of people are still using, you know, programming as a result, but we need to think about the process of getting that component fixed. Okay. Um, the diagnostic can see. So this uh, TIPA module is actually managing three CAN bus systems. Now the C CAN bus system is used exclusively to transmission for the transmission of the diagnostic information between the TIPA and the diagnostic scan tool. So you're going to see if this TIPA isn't, um, uh, let's say, in its right state. Um, a lot of other modules are going to have error codes on it and um, that CAN bus C network is really, really important. So this is what we're going to be using. The client had the MS919, you're going to need your TIPA module, he used a new one and your repair information. Now the location of the TIPA is located in the engine compartment near the battery. Okay. And the removal, removal process is not to... Uh, difficult. So we're going to disconnect the negative battery cable and then we're going to remove the nut. It's right here and there's a little cable next to it right there. Okay, remove that from the tip -em. 
And then using a suitable flat blade tool, we're gonna disengage the tip of upper retaining tabs from the battery tray bracket, okay? Which is number three right there. And then we're gonna grasp the tip of them and rotate the assembly up to, the, to free it from the mounting bracket. Then position the assembly upside down and the electrical connector is located at the bottom of the unit. And then from there, we're gonna disconnect the connectors by depressing the locking tab. And lastly, we're gonna remove the tip of okay? Now, how to connect. We're just gonna do Bluetooth today. All right, nothing crazy. And now we're gonna go configure this module, okay? So let's go ahead and ID the vehicle. All right, we're gonna go the auto detect. And uh, usually the auto detect works on newer vehicles. If it's an older vehicle, it doesn't really work that well. Doesn't mean that there's a problem, it's just, you know, auto spending their money on the newer stuff. All right, so we're almost there. We got the VIN, we're gonna click OK. And it's going to give us a summary of the vehicle. That's correct. And now, I'm just loving this topology view. So the first thing I want the client to do is just scan the vehicle just to see what is going on, okay? So now you can see here, we have fault codes and the CGW is the TIPA module, okay? Don't get it confused with the TPM. That's the tire pressure monitoring. So let's go ahead and uh, I want to go to the list view and I wanna scroll down just to see these error codes, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and click the arrow and I'm gonna go to trouble codes. Now, this is where the client brought to my attention. My attention. He said the error code, the B222C, vehicle con configuration not program. So I can, I can logically understand when you hear C programs, you're going to think that it needs to be uh, programmed with your J2534, or in his case, the Y-Tech. But the fact that it said configuration, I thought the, the program is the result. The configuration is the process. That's, that's the thing that we need to pay attention to, the process to get it to the end result. Now, if we look at this repair information, I know this is kind of small, but on the top here, it says... Um, Let's see, theory of operation. In order for the TPM to function, okay, properly, the vehicle configuration information must be correctly programmed. So use the term configuration again. Um, possible causes, tip of not configured correctly, another indicator. And then uh, if we go to the final step here, okay, configure the new tip of, okay. Um, with the scan tool, enter the programming network con configuration and program the TIPM to the vehicle. So they're using this term TIPM, or uh, not TIPM, configuration. If they were going to say to program it, they would, you know, tell us to take out our Y tech and they would give us the programming language. They would they would give us signs that we need to do that. Um, this is just configuration language, and we can literally take what they're telling us and we can apply it to our scan tool, okay? The terminology is a little bit different, but once you get the lingo of things, you'll understand what they really, really mean. So what I did was I went to special functions and you can see here where it says relearn tip them. We're gonna go ahead and click that, okay? And then we're gonna have a couple prompts. The purpose of this routine is to erase the tip them program status, which will force the tip them to relearn the current uh, VIN from the engine controller. Okay, the configuration data will be lost in the TIPM and may require a vehicle reconfiguration once this routine is completed. All right, so we're gonna click OK. This process take a few seconds, one, two, three, and the procedure is done, okay? So the vehicle configuration, configuration DTCs and the TIPM each other ECUs may have been set. So we're just gonna go ahead and click OK and go back and erase these codes and let's see if this works okay let's go back and then I'm gonna go to quick erase and we're gonna go ahead and watch these modules turn green hopefully 
All right, so you can see the tipum is now configured and everybody looks happy. All right, so this saved the client a lot of money. You know, he doesn't need to be going to the OEM tool. So there, there, there are stages to it, you guys. Anyhow, let me explain what you need to remember. So always read the service information before determining if the module needs programming or coding or even both. All right, a lot of the times blank modules need to be programmed. Some don't, some need both. So we need to know before we go. Second, if you're installing a used module, make sure the same part numbers are from the same year, make and model. Okay, it doesn't work right. Um, if you like say have a 2015 and you try to install like a 2013 okay typically the newer models have more ecus and more functionality to it and that's what that model was designed to um you know assist with those other modules and then if your alto device does not have the tip and feature which it does happen okay then you can use the ytech chrysler j2534 application um as they have coding diagnostics coding and programming coverage okay so that's the strategy that i use i, I typically like to um, maximize what the scan tool can do if it can't do it then i'll go to the j2534 when that can't do it then i'll go to the oem okay and look if you guys are deciding to upgrade your diagnostic equipment when you're talking to your sellers Make sure they give you a diagnostic tool strategy. What I always typically do is, even if you're, let's say, at a, buying a stage one tool, okay, I'm gonna give you a plan so you can graduate to, you know, in accordance to your, your level. You're gonna grow at a certain point and at least you have something to strive to. Rather than just chuck you a tool then that's, you know, beyond your means, okay? So, look guys, if you don't want to go through that hassle, go ahead and book a console with me, okay? I can align you with the right tool. I can give you strategies to solve multiple problems. And, um, you know, most of all, give you the training that you need, okay? So with that, guys, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Short and sweet. Comment, like, subscribe. And with that, I'll see you guys next week. Take care.